Good morning and welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church at Worship. Today is June 14th and it is the second Sunday after Pentecost. We begin with confession and forgiveness. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is enduring, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts that, overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from Exodus. The Israelites had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and said before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, Everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Oh, 
and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanian, and Judas, Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost house of Israel. And as you go, proclaim the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, or two tunics, or sandals, or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy, and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. 
So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to the councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. But when they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. And children will rise against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. These are dangerous times, incendiary times. No matter what one speaks, it is interpreted by the construct, the construct of its hearers, the lens through which they view the world. It's a statement of the left or of the right, liberal or conservative, democrat or republican. What we say is either oversensitive or not sensitive enough. If you post an opinion, you're being too political. If you post a picture of a puppy, you're out of touch with what's going on in the world around you. We might be tempted to hide in virtual silence, to keep our voices quiet, to protect ourselves from backlash, and yet, as the church, we cannot just keep silent. There is a word, or maybe better, the word that needs to be proclaimed. And that word with a capital W, the second person of the Trinity, the incarnate God, is Jesus. You see, Jesus transcends our biases, our politics, the sides that we like to claim for ourselves. Jesus is the voice above the noise. Jesus is the word that needs to be heard, and yet this good news, this gospel, is not always an easy word. Sometimes the gospel is what comforts and consoles, and yet at other times, it's that which forces us out of our complacency. It challenges our understanding and it calls for a turn of heart. And none of us are immune to the power of God's word. You see, each week we, in worship, begin our service with confession and forgiveness. We confess before God and at least before the pandemic, in the presence of one another, that we are in bondage to sin, and we cannot free ourselves. We've sinned against God in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved God with our whole heart or our neighbors as ourselves. In these days of escalated racial tension, in the light of the horrendous deaths of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and way too many others, 
we are forced to look deep within ourselves to see the truth of who we are devoid of pretenses and defenses. It is in laying bare our souls, emptying ourselves, removing the veils that we try to hide behind that we can begin to feel the mercy of God fill us with overflowing grace. It's in the cleansing power of confession that we can begin to experience the presence of God who, who longs to dwell in and work through us. As we Lutherans like to say, this is God's work, our hands. And that's precisely what our lesson for this week is all about. What it means to be the church. Our gospel opens with Jesus going about in the cities and in the villages. He's teaching in the synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, that it's come near and curing every illness and disease. Teaching, proclaiming good news, and healing. Everywhere Jesus went, there was the manifestation of God. He taught what he knew. Who he, he taught what he was. God's incarnate love. God's love in the flesh. When Jesus saw the crowds gathered, he had compassion for them. Now, compassion is defined as the sympathetic concern for the suffering of another. Together with the inclination to give aid, to show support, to show mercy. Jesus was drawn to the needs of the gathered crowd for they were harassed and, and helpless like a sheep without a shepherd. So Jesus gathers the twelve disciples saying the harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few. And he gives them authority. He gives them his authority, the authority of God over unclean spirits to cast out demons, to cure every disease and every sickness. And he gave them authority to do what he had been doing. He empowered the church to be the church, to be as Christ to the world. Disciples saw what Jesus had been doing, and then they were sent out with the power to do the same in Jesus' name. Interestingly, however, Jesus, who was all about breaking down barriers and welcoming Samaritans and Gentiles, is now telling the disciples to stay away from them but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Go among the lost of your own people. Go to the harassed and the helpless in your own land. Go show compassion for those folks in your own communities, in your own neighborhoods. These words apply to us today as well. We are called to bring the good news of God to the places in which we live. While it's exciting to go to faraway places, to go on mission trips, God's word is needed just as much here, at home, in this moment. We are not called to fix the world. That's God's job. But we are called to be the agents of change. We are called to reflect the light of Christ in shadowed places. We are called to journey with our neighbors, be present with them, learn their names, listen to their needs, their hopes, their dreams. We are called to risk being uncomfortable, being vulnerable, and to extend compassion. 
For this is God's work, our hands. This is what the church has been created for, sharing the message of God's infinite love and mercy. This is who we are. This is our mission in the world. The Great Commission is to go and make disciples, baptizing them in the triune name of God, teaching them all that I have commanded you. And remember, I will be with you to the close of the age. The Pentecost spirit has been unleashed upon us. We cannot be silent. We do have a word for the world. So where is our proclamation? Let us not be defined by our building, but by the work to which we have been called through the waters of baptism. We are to live among God's faithful people, hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed. To serve all people following the example of Jesus. And to strive for justice and peace for all the world. This is our holy work. To share Christ with the world with all that we say and all that we do and with all that we are. We are not inviting people to our building. We are inviting them into the life-giving relationship that we have with our loving God. And while that sounds good and a lofty endeavor, it isn't as easy as it sounds. And Jesus tells us why. See? See? I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Not everyone will receive Christ among us. There are those who would rather inflame, cut off their noses despite their faces. Think, the world did not receive Jesus. And many who initially did fell away. And those around us may not receive our word either. But then even the disciples themselves found it difficult to remain faithful. As Jesus made his final trip into Jerusalem, the same voices that cried out, Hosanna, Hosanna, son of David, Hosanna in the highest on Palm Sunday by the end of the week shouting, Crucify! Crucify him! But we will speak because we are the church. We will seek justice and peace in all the world because that's our calling. That's our vocation. That's our mission in the world. And when we are weary, as we all are in these difficult times, and we don't know what to say, Jesus offers these words. Do not worry about what to say, for what you will speak is not from you, but the Spirit of the Father speaking through you. Yes, these are dangerous times incendiary times. But what greater opportunity do we have to use the flame of God's Pentecost spirit to bring compassion, mercy, and justice to bear? We are the church, and we will withstand the heat for the sake of the world. In Jesus' name.
we join together, professing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God, the Creator. Jesus, the Christ. The Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Bless you now and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. To God.